Hello, everyone. This is your always tactful host, Pendy. And this is Paul, also known as Light Paul or E6 Twitch. Hup, one, two, hup, three, four, hup, five, six. I'm afraid to ask, but what are you doing over there? I'm working out. I've got to get stronger. Well, that's somewhat normal for once, but what are you getting stronger for? I've got to prepare myself for rank eight. I can't get there if I'm too weak. That's not how it works. Where did we get a pool? Oh, the pool? Oh, I found all these uh, rainbow-colored crystals. They were very uh, illustrious. I wasn't sure what I could do with them, but then a very tan-looking fairy with pink wings took them off my hands in exchange for a swimming pool. Avon Cannonball! Well, before Pendy realizes the deal he really got, I'll go ahead and welcome our audience to Tactfully Die, a Slime Time podcast spinoff that covers just about everything in the world of Dragon Quest, The Adventure of Die, and the Dragon Quest Tact mobile game. That's right. We'll talk about the latest and greatest with Dragon Quest Tact first. Good. I've got a fever, and the cure is to talk some tact. There are a lot of updates to go over, but I noticed one of the smaller changes developers recently implemented is uh, more experience will now be given for Battle Roads. I don't know how much exactly, but that'll be nice. I've always taken advantage of those for experience where I can. Yeah, I, I guess that's fine. I didn't actually think it was a problem before, but whatever saves us time is a good thing. Exactly. Did you also notice the improvements to the swap shop menu? Oh, I sure did. That's honestly my favorite change they've done with all the recent updates. It was a pet peeve of mine that every time you backed out of a swap shop menu, you would go back to the main swap shop menu instead of staying in the limited or special menu that you might be in. I am so glad they fixed that. It was very annoying. Yes, that's a nice usability improvement. Mm -hmm. So currently we have a Dragon Quest IX event going on, and there are two paid banners at the time of this recording. One for one dragon, one for another dragon. They're all pretty much the same if you ask me. Dragon, dragon. But anyway, between the two banners, they share an A rank. I did not do the paid pulls this time, but I did get the A rank unit, the Axolotl. Hey, there you go. (laughs) <laughs> uh, so far, I have a uh, Barbarus, who's supposed to be a, a super good uh, Zam unit, especially he'll be very good for those, uh, uh, if we ever have one of those mega bosses that are weak to Zam, it'll be perfect for that. And I also got an Axel Hoddle as so far as well. I'm not really pulling for anyone right now, uh, but I did get that Barbarus and the Axel Hoddle off the Grey Gnarl paid pull. Uh, the two banners are intertwined, so you can get one off the other. So you can get a gray gnarl off the barbarous and vice versa. Well, getting something good is always worth celebrating. So what do you think of the activities and rewards they have for the current Dragon Quest IX event? Oh, man. When I saw all the family fragments you could get in the fig swap shop, my eyes got huge. I must have all the figs. You can get figs through the all-out battle the Giddish Empire tiered fights, or by collecting the very mysterious land maps through the Wishes Come True events. Those events also drop the new weapons, two other types of maps, Stella upgrade crystals, and the chance to recruit Dark Paul. Then you... Wait, Dark Paul? Yeah. Dark Paul is the name of the new recruitable monster in this event. Not a very high fantasy type name, though, is it? Are you kidding? That's the best name ever. No wonder I like this game so much. You can use the uh, very mysterious land map to do the... Mysterious Nuid Isle stages that have a guaranteed drop of one fig and one stamina juice. There's also a chance it could drop the same map you need to challenge the stage as well. I like those odds. I thought so too. However, the drop rate for those mysterious land maps is seemingly infinitesimally small. Apparently it's like 3%. I hate it. For example, I had one full day of stamina, plus I used all the 40 and 60 gem stamina refills. Want to know how many maps I got? The mysterious maps in particular? Not really. No, how many? (laughs) Not one. It's extremely annoying. My dreams of figs and family fragments are slowly dying, Dark Paul. I'm usually pretty good with how they set up these events, but they need to increase the drop rate for this map at least a little bit. Get it to where it equals the drop rate for the Stella upgrade crystals. At least I think they seem to have a higher drop rate. That's how it seems. That's how it's gone for me so far. I mean, that way it's still not easy, but not impossible like it currently is either. Yes, that would be nice. 
I get that they don't want us to be able to just have as many fragments as we want, but it's such a tease. Like I, I didn't realize how limited they were going to be. And so I spent 10 fragments on an iridescent orb. Cause you know, you always need those and there's yeah. like two cheap ones in the shop. I didn't realize, Oh no, I probably should have actually saved these for, for fragments instead. Cause you know, it just seemed like early on that you'd be able to earn them at a proper rate. So I'm really hoping that the, the rest of the event when they add it in the weeks to come, will have some additional opportunities to get figs, you know, some organic ones where we'll end up with some extra ones no matter what. Yeah. Otherwise, the store just sits there unused, mocking me, laughing at me. Damn you, fig store! Uh, okay, okay. Well, enough with me being overly dramatic. Uh, would you like to tell everyone how we really get to rank 8 in this game? If I must. So, yeah, they just added rank 8, and there's a special crystal for that that didn't exist before. By the way, there was a lot of dread from our at least our Facebook community before this came along, and now it's here. And the rank eight part of it's probably not as bad as we expected. You know, you just need no. the crystal. Um, you need two crystals for an S rank, one for an A rank to take them up to rank eight, and B and below do not cost any of this crystal, so that's nice. And you can get this crystal a few different ways. You, you can do it from completing a regular weekly mission of completing 350 missions, which anybody who does the Battle Road should do, so that's not bad. You can do it from beating a, the highest level of hard mode, which is also not really that bad, especially during the, the current thing where the, the rewards are boosted. And you can apparently get them from story and special missions as well. Yep. So... Rank 8 crystals. Given that, I'm sitting on a pile of like, I don't know, 14 or so. And this is after having ranked up, um, let's see, King She Slime, Seraphi, um, both Dragon Lords, Nocturnus, some some A ranks, you know, like the Green Dragon, I guess, and um, the girl who's a healer. So, yeah, yeah, I, yeah, exactly, Claria. And so, like, I've ranked up a lot of units, and that's good. The only, the real limitation hasn't been the crystals, it's been gold, as ever. How about you? Oh, pretty good. Uh, I was pretty well prepared for this. Every day, almost every day, I had been getting those experience codexes in the buy, the buy handy item special swap shop. I made my uh, main arena players my first focus, so I got characters like Pizarro, Nock, Vera, King She Slime, Squidzilla upgraded first. And with my bank of experience codexes, I was able to get them get them to 130 instantly. So now I'm working on my support players like Ma'am, Claria, Seraphi, and the Diamond Slime that I was lucky enough to get off a tickets pull. Nice. That was nice. Uh, Diamond Slime is supposed to be the best selflessness tank in the game, so I'm really happy about that. Me too. And by the way, I think I got Diamond Slime after having done a paid pull and like eight, ten gem pulls, you know? Like, okay. So I was it was looking to me like I was going to end up having to get to 15 pulls or whatever, which really did not like. But I also really wanted that particular unit. But then my my fiance, she did the final 10 pull for me and, and I got it. I was like, yes, I can't believe it. So that was nice. nice. But anyway, how are you doing with Terry? So at first, nope, my curse of not being able to get either of the Terry characters continued. But... Just yesterday, I got him off a ticket pull. Hey. Yeah. So in addition to uh, my arena and support players, I upgraded some other characters I like to use for harder content, like the famed, uh, I don't know if it's Schleiman or Schleiman tank, uh, Veronica, Dragonlord Trueform, and Jessica. I used the last bit of my experience codexes I had left for DTLF and uh, Jessica to get them up to 130 right away and the slime tank and veronica are currently being leveled up with my support characters the old-fashioned way so uh, before the nine event i was also taking great advantage of the rank up extra reward stages is currently three times the usual awards which is fantastic have you taken advantage of that too as a matter of fact i have yes early on once that campaign started i actually was doing mostly that you know like i, I wasn't worrying about the the crystals for stella oh yeah so yeah, I was just trying to get my numbers up, and then I ended up doing more rank 8, you know, ups as I got more gold in. And so that actually has depleted my supply of orbs somewhat. So I probably have to do a little bit more of the general rank up missions before the campaign goes away for that, just, just to, you know, build a supply. So in addition to the rank up stuff being up, 
so are the rewards for hard story mode. Yeah, yes. double. That's been good, too. Uh, I don't mind how they've set up getting these illustrious crystals for rank 8 in general. It's not too unreasonable on how to get them. I've also been doing some missions that drop the class-specific crystals. Specifically, I didn't have a lot of the slime in the boss monster crystals going into this. With this rank 8, I'm also going to take advantage of the battle roads I haven't completed yet. My overall rank for the game is 27 because I still have a few battle roads yet to complete. Plus, there are some stages whose uh, mini metals I haven't gotten yet. With rank 8 monsters, I'll definitely be able to finish it up now without much issue. And I currently have 121 mini metals. I just need 125 for the next prize. I looked, and there are at least four more I can get from the regular Battle Roads. I was able to get all the new ones for the hard story stages that they gave us. Mm -hmm. And the next prize for me at 125 is 100,000 gold, which I could really use right now. Couldn't we all? Before I talk about gold, you mentioned farming hard story mode, right? Yeah. Well, I'm down to like one mystery rank seven crystal you know like just yeah. and uh so i've been farming those particular stages that could potentially drop it right because there's two that could i think yeah two. and yeah and so like i've done a ton of them where i'm spending gems to refill and such and i it's just not dropping any for me like sometimes the game just likes to mess with you like that oh yeah it's, it's frustrating because like oh sure i've got 10 of this kind and 12 of that kind but i can't even have one more drop of the kind that I actually need to take Sorrow up to rank 8, for instance. That's a bit lame of the game, but sometimes that's just how it goes. I, I ran into the same thing with the same crystal in the very oh. beginning. I was like, I, I just need one more, and it wouldn't drop. <laughs> uh, and it's well, like double the reward, so if I just got one, if I got one, I get two, or if I get two, I get four. So I was like, ah, just give me one, but it, it wouldn't drop for a long time for me either. Yeah, the odds are just so stingy sometimes. Yeah. But... As you mentioned, the the next prize that you can get from doing from the mini medals is gold, right? And also there is a campaign coming up where I believe the Chinese players can earn us all a reward for 100,000 gold. And we all need gold. It continues to be a highly scarce resource and it, it just limits your progress all mm -hmm. the time. And by the way, like that's partially by design. But it's also a, a result of the way they've accelerated the the pace of the events and, and such for the you know non-Japanese version of the game. Because these things were spaced out a little farther over there, so they had more time to just organically earn the gold from the daily gold mission, etc. And we, we lose that time, but they don't actually give us anything to compensate for it. So the result is a greater scarcity of resource than there probably should actually be. Right. I saw that you were talking about that on the Dragon Quest Tact uh, Global Facebook group. I remember in Dragon Quest of the Stars, I had the opposite pro uh, problem with gold. I had millions of pieces of gold and barely anything to spend it on. Uh, it was just a waste. Uh, now I'm always struggling for gold. The weekend gold stages are okay, but they cost a lot of stamina, and they don't give you much for it. That's right. After you... After you get the reward for doing 500 of them, then, like, the next reward... it The next big reward is quite a ways off from that so it stops being very much worth your stamina time particularly when there's campaigns going on for rank up materials or whatever that's a shame one place that doesn't require gold though is the arena how have you been doing there well i was on a hot streak i had several several weeks in a row where i was pretty close to perfect the whole way but not last week i actually lost one battle in that week that hadn't happened to me in a long time uh, i got cocky they had a great dragon on their team, and, and instead of avoiding it, I thought I would just take the hit with the breath and power forward. Nope, it just took off more than I thought it would with some of my characters, and I paid for the price for it. Their stubborn Pizarro, they had a stubborn uh, Pizarro on their team that would just not go down, and he finished my team off. But uh, how's your arena been doing? Well, I'm glad I'm not stuck in a downward spiral slump like you. <laughs> 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 but um, no, it's been okay for me. Like, this... There was one time a couple days ago where I actually thought I might lose a fight. Like, I, I don't know, I got, oh, I know what happened. I, my starting position, my Baramos, like, I had him one space too close to the bad guys. I underestimated somebody's reach, you know? And uh -huh. so he got one-shotted, and it's like, if I just had him in a better spot, then the fight would have gone so differently. So as a result of losing that unit, you know, it's a cascading effect. Yes. So, yeah, I ended up winning the fight, but with only two units left. That's fine. I mean, like, right now we don't have any high priority reward for doing well or anything so mm -mm. and and i'm not doing terribly you know I'll, I'll probably 
I'm sure I'll finish in the top thousand, which is like I'd much rather finish in the top 500 better, but but whatever, it's fine. We've also finished a a guild tournament recently, you know, guild versus guild, and my my guild we we did okay. We lost a couple of fights. Like there was one day when like I didn't even think we should have lost, you know, but all it takes is a few weak links to mess you up. You know, like a few people who don't take it seriously or they pick mm-hmm. a, a fight that's way too strong for them or mm-hmm. whatever the case may be. You know, and, and a lot of us were kind of like pulling our hair watching that go down because we have <laughs> we have, you know, out of 20 people, you have many who are serious about it. But like I said, just it was maybe like three people who were not serious enough and yeah, it cost us some of our standing. Um, but we ended up, I forget, we got knocked out of the, the Masters bracket, and so we were in the next one below that. And our reward was 600 gems, I think, which is still okay. You know, nothing to sneeze at. And after the guild, you know, we had one guy, he hadn't signed in for like three days or something, so we just kicked him out. Oh, Real yeah, during a tournament? Break. You can't do that during a, during a tournament, especially... Yeah. With your guild, because your guild's one of the more serious ones. <laughs> I know. And this particular guy, you know, he's frustrating. us in the Facebook group. And I, I hate to call people out, given that I run the Facebook group, and I should be more um, more ambivalent or whatever, more neutral. But, yeah, this he's, like, creating new accounts all the time just to see what he can roll on the account. It's like, you're obviously not committed to your existing account, so why are you joining guilds that are decently serious about the game, you know? Yeah, but but at least he won't be a problem anymore. And just today we got a new guy in, and we got a new guy in a few days ago. So as long as those guys work out, I think we're in, in good position. Because for the month we finished it, I think it was 13 most recently. You know, as long as we stay in the top 20, I'm happy with that. I think that's very respectable. Nice. And uh, my guild uh, actually did a lot better than last time. I mean, yes, we did lose all of our qualifying rounds again, so we ended up in the lowest tournament. But we did go undefeated there, so that was very nice. <laughs> well, that's something. Yeah. So is there anything else you're looking forward to coming up? Oh, yeah. So we've got the uh, 1.5 anniversary coming up, and the 9 monster that I really want, Demon Form Corvus. He's supposed to be absolutely broken for the arena fight, so I'm looking forward to get him, getting him than anyone else. Man, I'm kind of tired of all these broken units, like this super <laughs> unit, th- that super unit. How, how do they have that many top tier units like every month? You know, Space Mount, dang it. But OK, whatever. I'll go after him as well. And uh, so, like you said, we've got that big anniversary. I'm sitting on some gems. Like I said, I have not done the paid pulls on those two dragons. And I mean, one reason I do that is, well, there's a decent chance I wouldn't get either one even from the paid pulls because like that's just how the game treats me. You know, like it's all based on how much you spend or whatever other variables we don't know about. Yeah, I don't I don't blame you. I mean, you, it's it's uh, save your gems and, you know, kind of you don't have to go for every single one if you want to, especially since like the if you don't get the the banner S monster, then you're just stuck with some other lower S monster that you probably already have maxed out anyways. Yeah, that I definitely already have, because like right. it's never like, oh, by the way, you got this pretty good S monster. It's always an S monster that you maxed out four months ago. So exactly. Yeah, um, if if the anniversary banner wasn't coming up, then I probably still would pull both just because they're pretty cool and you're likely to get duplicates of the A rank that way. But, but you know, whatever, I could just wait because, I, I mean, I just know when those special banners come up next week that it's going to be a, a situation where you're dying for gems just so you can do a little bit more of some particular banner. So Yeah, because they'll have some good deals for the, the – they always have really good deals for the anniversary banners, so. Yeah, and so unlike with the regular week, uh, you know, special banners that come along, um, when it's an event banner like that, I do tend to have better luck than than the average player. I mean, like, I'm also willing to buy a bunch of gems for it, but but still, I get good luck to where I don't regret the purchase. Yeah. Unlike, say, the average paid banner where I just get nothing from it, or unlike <laughs> the the metal card, you know, the special metal card you can buy, and I probably won't get anything from a month's worth of metal cards, you know, but. Oh uh, yeah, I get that. I got lucky with that. That's actually how I got the Terry off the tickets. <laughs> well, congrats. I'm glad. That's how it should work for everyone, right? And like, yeah. I think, I think this year I have gotten maybe twice, but probably only one special unit that way. Like, um, so I don't even know why I keep buying them. It's just that 
I see other people get stuff from them and I'm like, well, I, I would hate to miss out because I'm not doing it. But again, it's not exactly been worth my while. Yeah, but I it, only uh, I don't do them all the time. But when there's like units out there that I really, really want, like when Pizarro was out there yeah. or like uh, Terry's out there now and, and, and characters like that, then I'll actually do them. But uh, only only when there's characters out there that I want to maybe try and get period or maybe get an extra dupe and get luck, maybe get lucky from ticket pulls. That's good. I mean, do you know how many how many ticket pulls I've done on the Pissarro banner trying to get a duplicate? Like oh. more, than, more than 40 and, and probably I mean, just like every week I'm putting all 12 or 13 towards that. And, you know, unfortunately not working out for me, probably just not going to be able to get a duplicate from him unless I do crystals. And I will. Yeah. But, but it's a shame because when you really want that one and you're pouring all the tickets into it, it'd be nice for it to eventually work out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, sometimes now then before we get into the die portion of the show it's time for the tact tip of the day tip of the day did you know did you know japan has an excellent website called game 8 that ranks all the tact characters in a tiered format that's right tacticians game 8 has a handy overall ranking that includes who they think the best characters are overall to include support characters they do these tiered rankings for every level separately, such as S, A, B, etc. And they even have one specifically for the arena. With many of the tiered lists, Game 8 even offers versions for monsters with no hearts and monsters with maxed hearts. That's amazing. I'll make sure to put the link to the website in our show notes. That was our tech tip of the day. Tip of the day. Now let's get into some die. Every week, we're going to review two episodes from the newest Dragon Quest, The Adventure of Die anime. In the future, we will also do reviews of the manga, upcoming die console news, and maybe even a little bit about the merchandise as well. But first, we're going to start with episode 9, titled A Single Shard of Courage. In this episode, Pop gathers the courage to help his friends battle Crocodine when all seems lost. Will Pop's newfound courage be enough to defeat Crocodine? We last left our story with Crocodine executing a Beast King Anguish Blast, his special move taking out our heroes and seemingly sealing a victory for Crocodine, the bad guys. Yeah, and poor Mam getting restrained by the Hey Hydra when she tries to heal die. Tentacles and anime, what can I say? <laughs> That's High Hydra. And yeah, High Hydra, are, thank you. Right, right. Things are bad, but then Masofo of the fake hero party motivates Pop to join the fight. He knows Pop has a conscience, so he shows up with some ill-gotten loot, asking Pop to join his party and implies that Pop will end up just like him if he's unable to help his comrades. He even has a crystal ball that shows Pop the danger that everyone's in. This scene happens in the original Dai anime as well, of course, but Masofo's speech goes on for longer, as you might expect, and he talks more about how he started out really hoping to be heroic, but, you know, mm. it just didn't work out that way. So it's more stirring as a result, you know, just because there's a lot more to it. But the Cliff Notes version used in the new show is still pretty effective. Yeah, I like how they do this in the story, but of course, he has to flick a booger while doing so. That uh, little anime character trope always grosses me out. Aww. I do like that uh, Zabarera communicates through the Hyhydra throughout the episode. It elevates his involvement up a little higher than just a schemer and casual observer. Indeed, it is a, a cool element of his powers. Mm. So somehow Pop is, able to, Pop is able to sprint to the throne room where the action's happening. Just in time. Yeah, a, a little uh, Dragon Ball Z instant transmission going on here. There's no way he got there that fast. <laughs> it's not for me to ask how. But Pop shows, <laughs> Pop shows a lot of character growth here. He basically overcomes his cowardice and challenges Crocodile to a fight. Yeah, he also cleverly baits him with a one-on-one -on -one fight to keep Brass out of it. Because uh, Crocodine doesn't see him as a threat, he agrees to it. That's smart thinking. Then Pop surprises Crocodine by casting Kafriz, but Crocodine is able to defend against it with a windshield created by his Vortex Axe. Yep, and the animation for this fight is really good. I love it a lot. They do an excellent job of making Crocodine look very powerful and intimidating with some of the uh, very nice dynamic camera angles that they use. They do. Incidentally, Crocodine was pink in the original anime, Whereas he looks a more he looks a more intimidating orange here, and his face is also drawn much better in the new. Yeah, shows. I agree. Yeah, yeah. So he's just fiercer and cooler here. Anyway, Pop takes a big chance by striking Crocodile with his magic rod, shattering its crystal. That was his intention, though. 
He then flicks the shards around Brass, creating a circle, and casts a glimmer spell, restoring Brass to his senses. Yep. Yeah, Pop gets a nice moment, too, where he explains to Crocodine how he can't abandon his friends and reflects on what Avon has always tried to teach him related to that. Yes, very nice moment for him. In turn, Crocodine is taken aback by Pop's courage and pride, and then he reflects on abandoning his own pride to pull off the dirty scheme of using brass in the fight. Yeah, he really starts to question himself here, but uh, Zabarera chimes in and snaps him out of it. And that's too bad, because I think they could have ended up skipping the last bit of the fight, if not for that. But what are you going to do? Yeah. And the mystery of Gomi-chan's power then continues. Gomi-chan's panicked tears are able to heal Dai at, at this moment when Crocodile has decided to go ahead and, and finish off Pop. It's only like three tears in the current anime, you know, that he that dripped down on to Dai. Mm-hmm. But he flew around and cried a lot more in the original. Oh, okay. Yeah, and I won't go into details, but uh, Gomi-chan's mysterious magic powers will continue to play a role in the series. I'm told it's eventually explained by someone who's read the entire manga series, but even as far as I am in the series, which I'm I'm up to where it's aired in Japan so far, uh, they haven't quite gone into it yet. Oh, I wanted to hear you talk about things you don't know about. That's my specialty. (laughs) Ah. So, thanks to Gomachan, Dai is able to stand up, then his dragon crest finally lights up, and it's so powerful that it crumbles the High Hydra into pieces, freeing Mom. I really like that. It was a cool effect. It, and it shows how absolutely powerful the Dragon Knights are. So they are so powerful that Dai is able to stop a swing of the Vortex Axe with one hand, grip it, and then fling Crocodile into a wall. Yeah, that was a great moment. I love how Dai's stance like crushes the floor beneath his foot as he absorbs the blow of the axe. And then he sh- you know, just finger- shatters it with his fingers into the blade so he can grip it. Very cool indeed. Then Pop saves the day again by flinging his sword to Dai. Dai is able to perform an Avon Strash to counter Crocodine's Beast King Anguish Blast. And with an assist by Ma'am, as she does a heal on Pop, which allows him to move more freely and uh, fling the sword to, to uh, Dai so that he can do the Avon Strash. And then uh, Crocodine afterwards laments to Dai that he did not fight Dai fairly. And he also thanks Pop for his lesson on pride as he escapes. So possible foreshadowing for later? Could be. I did find it interesting that uh, Crocodine spilled a lot more blood as, as he was defeated compared to the old anime. Like in the old anime, like there's some, again, there's stuff that comes out of his mouth and out of his body. But like in the new anime, it's just like a, just a river of green blood that goes right out of his, <laughs> his stomach. Well, I didn't think the volume was that different, although oh, yeah. that is a good description of the details. But the blood here in the new show is blue instead of red, like in the old anime. And it's true that if if it's blood that's not red, you can get away with a lot more in animation. Yeah, it's like robots and different colored blood, and then you can just go to town in any kind of cartoon or anime. <laughs> For better or worse. Uh, and I also love the expression on the little scared heel slime among all the monsters, uh, which was great as they see Crocodile defeated. That was, yeah. Yeah, that was, that was nice. And I also love how the Garuda sweeps in, swoops in to save Crocodile at the end. Oh, yes, and that's different than the old anime and manga. In the past versions, they had these ghost-like monsters. You know, they're they're just some kind of undead monster. Put Crocodile in a coffin and carry him off. It made it more clear that Crocodile actually died from the fall because, like, clearly it was, he took a bad spill, but it's not 100% obvious that he is actually supposed to be dead there in the new show. Yes. How very Prince of Kanakian of them. Another great episode. That it was. Now on to episode 10, On to Papnika Kingdom. In this episode, Dai and company prepare to travel to the Papnika Kingdom, while most of the Dark Army's commanders gather to be briefed on the current situation. Dai's party runs into Hyunkel, another former student of Avon. But is there more to him than it seems? Treasure chest! Treasure chest. It's Dragon Quest, so of course the heroes get to open treasure chest. In the chest at the beginning of the episodes are equipment upgrades from the King of Romos. And it's actually decent equipment. No measly cypress stick, copper sword, or wayfarer's clothes here. Right? And if we're talking Dragon Warrior 1, then it's a torch, a key, and a measly amount of gold. Why are Dragon Quest kings so cheap, I wonder? Maybe they're just hard up for money. (laughs) But they do a nice nod to the fake heroes at this part of the story while Dai, Pop, and Mom are celebrated by the kingdom's populace. Must, they're all there in the crowd. In the old anime, they're at the back of the crowd. In this one, they're just in the middle of it. But anyway, mm-hmm. Masofo in particular, 
thinks to himself that he's glad Pop was as courageous as he suspected. And then we next turn to the Dark Army's castle, where we learn that Hadler has just mastered Cassiz thanks to Dark King Vern. And then next he orders a recall of all the Legion commanders, so we get to meet him. And then we learn... (laughs) Oh, yeah. Finally, they're no longer just silhouettes. And then we learn that Dai's party also gets a ship, a very nice one. Yeah, moving up in the Dragon Quest world. They didn't, even, they didn't even have to fight any gremlins or bring the king, Black Pepper, to do it either. Man, I want some Black Pepper. Anyway, one difference to note is that in the old anime, Brass isn't alone when he watches Dai and his friends sail away. The king of Romos has stationed guards to remain with him on Dermline Island. I miss that touch in the newer anime as it fleshes the world out a little bit better. Of course the king wouldn't want Brass to be used against Dai again, so... Mm. It's cool that the author anticipated that, you know, and it wouldn't have taken that much longer to show it in the new show. Yeah. Anyway, back on the ship, as we see Pop get a little too comfortable with Mom, Pop's moment of coolness gets interrupted by the sudden appearance of a merman monster. Thankfully, the ship's holy water is able to repel it. Yeah, that was a nice nod to the power of holy water in the Dragon Quest series and a very fun, snarky line from Mam about Pop's supposed leveling up that he was just bragging about the moment before. And I really enjoyed that. Yeah, it's interesting. She was tolerating him putting his arm around her. You know, I guess she's like maybe a little bit curious what he's going to boast or do. But yeah, but yeah, then she gets to put him in his place anyway. So it'll, <laughs> yep. it'll definitely be cool to see whether anything ever ever comes of the attraction there. So then we learned that the kingdom of Popnika is on the continent of Holkia, which used to be Dark Lord Hadlar's main base the first time he tried to take over the world. Yeah, and we also learned that the Legion of the Undead commander has been sent there as the invading army of that region. Next, we're introduced to the brutality of Flazard, the Blizz Blaze Legion commander. He kills one soldier with his fire powers and another soldier with his ice powers. Both the new show and the old one use a cool split-screen effect that combines to show Flazard's split form. You know, you see one hand do one thing, you see the other, then turns out it's the same guy. Mm -hmm. Very stylish. That said... The old show is a little more brutal in that Flazard actually shatters the poor victim after he freezes him. Yeah, I really like the design of Flazard and his fire and ice elements. He's also going to be one of the more brutal commanders that Dai's party will have to deal with, as we'll see later. Yeah, it's interesting because he's an unredeemable character. He's not like Crocodile or Hyunkle where, you know, they're they're eventually going to turn around or whatever. And we understand why they are the way they are. But he's just so darn cool that you end up liking him anyway. Mm-hmm. Then we also have a nice appearance of the Frostburn and Dancing Flame monsters who work under Flazard. And I believe in the original show, they were both Dancing Flames. But here it's, uh, you know, one ice one, one fire one. And it's better to have one of each kind, considering that's what Flazard's all about. Yeah, not a surprise. But they are the main grunts of the Blizz Blaze Legion. So that's good they, that they uh, did that. Indeed. And when Flazard arrives at Sovereign Rock Castle... We learn that Crocodine has been put in resurrection fluid that may or may not save him from dying. A 50% chance to be exact. So basically it's Zing fluid. (laughs) I guess it is. That's a better chance than we have of getting getting those drops that we want, those map drops. I know. Don't don't remind me. (laughs) (laughs) Next, we're introduced to Baran, the Dragon Legion commander. I have a feeling he may be very important later. Indeed he might. Soon. We also get to see the Shadow Legion commander Mistvern as well. In the show, they label him as a Shadow Vizier. Yeah, I looked up that a, a Vizier was the second most powerful position in ancient Egypt right after the Pharaoh. And knowing what I know now, this is also a little bit of foreshadowing in the story. If you'd only watched Aladdin enough times, you already would have known. <laughs> but in the meeting of commanders, we learn that Dark King Vern has ordered Hadlar to let Hyunkle be the one who defeats Dai. So they're not all going to go together. They're just going to see what Hyunkle can do. Right. Dai and company are surrounded by uh, Dragon Quest-style skeletons, but are saved by a mysterious figure that uses an Avon-style slash. And uh, also, as they've been doing a lot with the new anime, the skeletons look a lot more on-model Dragon quest skeletons than what was drawn in the manga and the the original anime yeah you gotta like that the scene plays out a lot better in the original anime though the scene with the skeletons Mm -hmm. because the tiles on the floor they start shaking and it creates a creepy effect before the skeletons eventually emerge they pop out so quickly in the new show that the atmosphere is lost it's kind of like just the there's generally often an effect that the show is moving in fast forward a little bit you know and Mm -hmm. sometimes they really sacrifice things like that anyway After the new guy dispatches the skeletons, 
we learn that he's the first student of Avon, but Pop is very suspicious of him. He knows what's up. It doesn't take long for Hyunkle to uh, reveal himself as the undead Legion commander and to summon more skeletons to attack Dai's party. It actually takes about an episode longer in the original anime. Episodes 9 and 10 here are about the equivalent of episodes 16 through 20 of the original. In the old show, Hyunkle accompanies the party to a shrine where they look for Leona, and he still hasn't even introduced himself by name yet, which is weird. No. Then he turns on them. There's also a little more fighting with the skeletons, e- even if some of it's repeated animation. Yeah. But here in the new show, he turns on them right away, which is indeed more efficient. We already know that Hyunkle is going to attack them, especially with the way the new show cuts from the Dark Legion meeting to Dai's meeting with Hyunkle and back. So Dai tries to take out Hyunkle with a couple of often techniques, but Hyunkle is able to counter all of them. And then they end the episode with a smirking Hyunkle. Will Dai be able to defeat him? We'll find out next episode. Speaking of episodes, we have a brand new episode of this podcast in the works for you guys. That's right. There will be a roundtable discussion of the manga volumes. It will be a spinoff of this show called Die Another Day. I am shaken, but not stirred about that new title. (laughs) In addition to Pendy and me, we will have two guests that will join us as well. And barring some unforeseen incident, we will be recording it several days after the recording of this episode. Maybe that's not the best Seinfeld line to use? Good point. On that possibly ominous note, I think that's all for today. Thanks for joining us on this episode of Slime Time, Tactfully Die. If you want to prepare for the next episode, be sure to watch episodes 11 and 12 of The Adventure of Die anime on Crunchyroll. We don't use Patreon. If you do have any money, though, that is just completely strashing in your wallet, pouch, bottomless bag, treasure chest, pot, barrel, safe, or even searchable wall sack, and you would like to don't donate anything to a website that's been supporting Dragon Quest fans for over 20 years, stop by the Dragon's Den at www.woodis.com den and click on support this site. Woodis has owned and maintained the Dragon's Den DQ fan site for decades. He personally edits every YouTube version of our podcast, and he fully appreciates any donations to help him keep the servers running. The Dragon's Den website also features an Amazon affiliate link. If you click the link and then make a purchase, a small fraction of the sale will go to support the den. It doesn't cost you anything, and every donation gets Dai one step closer to learning who his real father is. As part of the Slime Time Extended Universe, or STU, you can direct comments or questions for the podcast on Twitter and Instagram at DQ Slime Time. And you can follow me on Twitch at twitch.tv slash Twitch. Come watch me play a variety of games every Saturday, kids. Yay! Getting back to Dragon Quest, consider joining in tons of Dragon Quest discussions at the Dragon's Den forums, one of the few remaining forums still around. Find it from the Dragon's Den main page or at woodis.com slash forums. You can also find us and other rabid Dragon Quest fans through the Dragon Questers and Dragon Quest Tact global Facebook groups. We'd love to see you there. Or come hang out with us and tons of other hardcore Dragon Quest fans on the officially unofficial Dragon's Den Discord server. We'd like to thank everyone that made this possible, including Pendy, Woodis, the Dragon's Den, and whoever invented chicken salad. That's good stuff. It sure is. And a special thanks to Platy for helping me out with our rotating podcast logo. Please like, subscribe, and write a review for this podcast. For more Dragon Quest Slime Time, check out our library of episodes on Dragon's Den, Anchor.fm, Apple Podcasts, Audible, YouTube, and more. Catch you later, everybody. Don't hate. Appreciate. Time to zoom on out of here. <laughs> <laughs>